How's it going guys, Chaos Prime here. Few days to go before the Black Armory DLC launches and for your £10 it's still unclear exactly what you get. We know we will be getting 4 Forge content, a raid, but what's in limbo is strikes and the omission of the campaign means most likely story missions are now likely a thing of the past which is a shame as to me these are equally as important as all other content coming. As you know this doesn't sit well with me, the division went with this approach and it turned out to be the worst decision outside of forgetting to implement an anti-cheat they could have ever made, a decision they now have fixed with the division too. So hopefully we will have something, cause if we don't, I can tell you now, they will hemorrhage players and maybe this is why they are selling the annual pass instead of the standalone DLC, cause they know this too. Who knows? But it doesn't bode well for me and this is coming from someone who constantly gets called out by his clanmates as having rose tinted glasses. I mean they look cool right? The power cap is increasing to 650 which is almost a 10% increase and will continue to increase by this all the way to 750 power, 50 power at a time, ending in a 25% total power increase which isn't too shabby. Now Bungie what you need to do is enable an unsynced version of content we can farm easily, make it pre-matched only, no matchmaking if you need to, but allow us to go into a raid or something way above the power level requirement and just destroy everything. We want this more than you can imagine. The power soft cap despite the increase in power level will remain at 500. News on whether the last wish raid from Morgoth onwards will reward anything past 600 is again still unknown. Hopefully it will. Formerly known as Gaunt, we now know the main character of Black Armory is called Ada-1, and Ada-1 will be the one guiding you through the forges as your main point of call. Four new forges will be introduced on a weekly basis, each week will correspond to a new forge for that specific forge. Keep in mind with the dawning event on the 11th and the raid coming in December, this means the timing of said events will be a bit wayward at launch. The first forge will only be here for 4 days, with the second forge lasting 11 days to bring everything back in proper rotation to what will be expected a weekly rotation much like everything else in this game, essentially time gated. This content will be rated higher than 600 power level but won't be as hard as a raid which let's face it wasn't hard at all so who knows what they mean by this statement. It will drop power gear up to 650 but like everything else before it, it will be incremental before you start seeing 650 power drops. Lost Forges, as stated in the PlayStation blog, are endgame activities and is intended to be a rotating endgame activity with the raid going forward at least until the next DLC arrives. Because of this and the fact that these 5 events start to last the test of time come Season of the Drifter, matchmaking is finally enabled and will allow you to jump in solo or matched. It's an instance based environment and as such should be an interesting twist to the game. They ended by saying the content up front will be difficult. If you remember Escalation Protocol and Blind Well, they will be similar, getting easier as time goes on. The Scourge of the Past, the new raid included in the DLC, is a proper standalone raid. It's set in Earth's last city and while it isn't as big as Last Wish, it's still much larger than the Leviathan raid layers. In fact, on PlayStation Blog, they said it's bigger than Crota's End for those that remember the old Destiny 1 raids, but smaller than the Last Wish. Interestingly, Bungie compared the Scourge of the Past to the Wrath of the Machine raid from the original Destiny's Rise of Iron expansion, so this does at least brode well and bring me hope and excitement looking forward. The TWAB was pretty light hearted, so here is a quick roundup of the TWAB that's not already been covered above. The Veterans of the Hunt reward due early December has been delayed tentatively to the 18th December due to a dev issue that cropped up late. However, here are two videos of the coin flip and knife trick emote that you will be getting with the veterans of the hunt package to whet your appetite while you wait. Pretty cool stuff right? There's just way too many cosmetics in Eververse at this point, I'm happy they're giving us some away but come on, some of this cosmetics has to go in game. There is far 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 too much in the Eververse store, start putting some of this stuff that we can go hunt for into the game. It's really, really, really bad at present. I know it's cosmetics, but right now, 
Some of these cosmetics have to be tied to trials. There's way too many in the Eververse store. And I know this is Activision's way of making money, but at this point, it, I'm starting to get sick of it. And to the point where I'm losing interest fast in collecting these cosmetics. Originally, I was in love with collecting cosmetics, but now it's becoming a chore and a unnecessary RNG grind. RNG doesn't mean difficult, and to those people out there crying about the 1000 voices being a grind, it's not a grind, it's not difficult. Something like that, something like some of these cosmetics should be tied to a triumph, should be tied to a quest line, should be tied to something that is actually difficult, like Petra's run for example. Complete that and you get a guaranteed 1000 voices, something like that would be cool. Complete the raid and you get the ghost, that would be cool. Complete X, Y and Z and you get this. Complete these objectives for this triumph and you get this. Get this title and you get this, not pure RNG, because RNG doesn't include difficulty. What RNG includes is a waste of time, and people saying that this is a great grind, you're deluded. It's not how difficulty works. So please get that through your heads, and stop supporting this sort of activity. Right, with that said, here is a short fun skit done by at Toki Take, a Twitter user, full credit to them and a link to their Twitter below. Enjoy Guardians, and remain legend. <laughs> 